Hi, I'm Ali Donaldson, and as General Chair, I'm really excited about welcoming you to the virtual PLDI 2020 conference that will take place during June. A virtual conference is a new thing for most of us, and virtual PLDI will absolutely be what we make it. We've got a fantastic schedule of talks and special guests lined up, and I really hope that you'll support the PLDI community by engaging fully with the conference. Have a look at the exciting program that's online. Block out time in your calendars to attend the sessions live and get involved in discussions to make for a really interactive conference experience. Now, let me explain a bit about how the virtual conference is going to work. The conference presentations will be delivered as a webinar and the main means of communication during the conference will be a Slack workspace. If you're in a country where YouTube is available, then you will get the conference webinar via a YouTube live stream. And if you're in a country where YouTube is not available, then you'll be able to access the webinar via Zoom. After you've registered, and actually after registration closes, you'll receive details of how to access Slack and how to access either YouTube or Zoom, depending on where you are. Now, just like at a physical conference, each PLDI paper is scheduled during a paper session. A video presentation for each paper will be broadcast, and after that, one or more of the authors of the paper will be in the webinar live to answer your questions. Attendees will post their questions via Slack and a session chair, also live in the webinar, will relay questions to the authors. To see exactly what this will look like, we're going to show an example. Suppose that Dan and Tyler had a paper at PLDI and it's being presented in a session chaired by John. Let's take a look at what that would look like. The session is happening live, and Dan and Tyler's video is being broadcast. As I mentioned in the previous slide, even though the Raspberry Pi and the Dragon Board have the same process... Adam Smith from Hogwarts University finds the presentation really interesting and starts to type up a question in Slack. ...to fine-tune interference just by reading the processor specifications. A short side note is that... We Sharon Davis from Bantu University and also has a question which she types into the Slack thread. As I previously mentioned once. For example, the bus and the memory trashing enemy programs were meant to similarly stress elements of the memory hierarchy. Thank you for your attention. It's the end of the presentation and now the session chair, John Wickerson, fields questions from the Slack thread. All right, thanks to Dan and Tyler for that lovely video. Uh, we've now got time for some questions, so get typing on Slack. Um, our first question has already come in from Adam Smith from Hogwarts University, who asks, Hello Dan, thanks for the talk. I was wondering, how do you expect your approach to behave in case of very large cache or high number of cores sharing a cache? That's a very good question. In the development boards that have uh, more cores, you usually have the cores grouped into... You can hear that Dan's audio quality isn't very good here, so PLDI authors and session chairs, please take note and see whether you can kit yourself out with a good webcam and microphone before the conference starts. ...are generally assigned to different clusters. All right, our next question uh, is from Sharon Davis from the University of Bantshire. And she says, you mentioned the graveyard of enemies. Multiple authors from each paper can be present in the webinar live to answer questions, so a question can be deferred to the most appropriate author to answer it. I think that Tyler can better answer this question. Tyler, do you want to take this one? Thank you for bringing up the graveyard component of this work. Yes, there is a victim graveyard, and these victims have corresponding enemies in the enemy graveyard. Now, these pairs can be tuned to create a hostile environment that stresses different interference. A big advantage of using Slack for Q&A is that the questions survive the webinar. So if there's not time to ask a question after a session, or if the authors have a more detailed answer to a question, they can follow up later offline using Slack. Thanks for watching. I hope that's given you an idea of what the virtual conference will be like in terms of its format. Please go ahead and register for PLDI 2020 if you haven't already. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the virtual conference in June.